Good day, everybody. This is Chris at the Ancient Scholar. Today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about a certain class of molecules, and that class of molecules that I'll be discussing are uh, what we know as uh, what are known as the opioids. Um, opioids are molecules that can interact with opioid receptors, of which we have three different types. We have the mu, kappa, and delta opioid receptors. Um, of of significant clinical importance uh, for us in toxicology is the mu opioid receptor because that's where you can get profound respiratory depression occurring in patients that happen to overdose on these opioid uh, substances that can act as ligands for the opioid receptors. I'm not going to talk about how the receptors work in any detail today, but what I want to do is I want to focus on talking about some of the opioid molecules, particularly the um, opiates. Um, and the opiates are um, opioids, are a subclass of the opioid uh, molecules, but opiates are naturally occurring opioids. Um, there are also synthetically and semi-synthetic um, opioids, but the opiates are the naturally occurring. So what we're looking at here is you're actually looking at a molecule of morphine. Morphine is an opiate. It occurs naturally. Of course, it comes um, from the poppy, okay, from opium, hence the uh, term opiate. And... Um, yeah, so let's talk about the basic chemical structure of how these opiates, or morphine in particular, are set up. So there are a few things that you want to um, be aware of here, okay? Um, all of the opiates, okay, have an aromatic ring in them. And this is my aromatic ring here in this morphine molecule. Okay, so this is a aromatic or benzene-like ring, and you can see I have my alternating double and single bonds, my resonance structure. Okay, so I have my aromatic ring in there. Okay, I have a quaternary carbon, and that quaternary carbon in this morphine molecule happens to be right here, and you can see that this carbon is attached, okay, to one, two, three, Four other carbons. That's why we call it a quaternary carbon, because it is it doesn't have any oxygens, it doesn't have any um, nitrogens, hydrogens, or anything like that. I should say just uh, to let you guys know, uh, the color scheme uh, for this is uh, black is carbon, white is um, hydrogen, red is oxygen, and blue is nitrogen. Okay, so I have my tertiary carbon here, or my quaternary carbon, and that quaternary carbon is bound to four other carbons. So this is sp3 hybridized as well. You need to have sp3 hybridization for the uh, specific geometry that results from having for um, single covalent bonds um, with the other carbons. You need sp3 hybridization. Uh, it gives you an angle, bonding angle of about 109.5 degrees. Okay, so that's a tertiary carbon. That tertiary carbon has two carbons between itself and uh, the quaternary carbon, excuse me, has two carbons between itself and a tertiary nitrogen. The tertiary nitrogen, because it has three covalent bonds to other um, atoms here. One, two, three, so it's a tertiary um, nitrogen because it's covalent bound to three separate atoms here, okay? In this case, happens to be carbons. Um, and there is exactly two carbons between the quaternary carbon and the tertiary nitrogen. So I have one, two, nitrogen. One, two, nitrogen, there are two carbon's difference. Um, those characteristics together are what we call the morphine rule. Morphine rule is a, is a chemical rule of thumb that is something you should see in all of your morphine-like molecules, your opiates, your naturally occurring opioids. Um, not, I don't think this is specifically part of the morphine rule, but you see this in all of your opiates. 
and that is you have a methyl group here, a carbon and three hydrogens attached to the tertiary nitrogen right here. Um, you see that on all of your opiates. Um, of other note, um, for morphine, I also have these two hydroxyl groups right here. Now the way that the um, opiates in particular work is that I have this nitrogen here. This nitrogen is electronegative, so it's charged here. So I kind of have a charged, a polar area of this molecule here. And if you can see, I have about five separate rings. I have my aromatic ring here. One, two, three, four, and five. And you can see that um, three of these rings, okay, these three rings here, one, two, and three, these three guys here more or less lie on the same plane. They're kind of flat, whereas these two are kind of off of that plane. Um, and you can see this one here is kind of sticking straight up. It's almost perpendicular. Um, and so the way that this molecule works is if I have my opioid receptor, the opioid receptor has a slot in it. You can think of it as having a slot, and it is a polar slot, it's charged. And that slot, that polar slot, is able to accommodate this charged area of a molecule. Okay, so I have this charged slot, this, char this polar area here, and it kind of just slides in there, and then I have a flat area of the receptor that is able to accommodate these three rings that are more or less lying on the same plane. So it kind of just slides in there. So I have my, I have my um, slot where the charged area can go into the receptor, and then this flat area here that can accommodate these three rings that are on the same plane. And that's how this molecule fits into that receptor. Okay, so that is morphine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just modify this molecule. I'm going to make some very seemingly simple modifications, and I'm going to produce some different mo molecules. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to take off these hydroxyl groups and I'm going to add acetyl groups. I'm going to acetylate this morphine molecule. All right, so let's go ahead and pull those guys off here. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my acetyl groups for you. Acetylate this guy here. All right, so now I've added the acetyl groups. And now I have a molecule of, so here are my hydroxyl groups that came off. My acetyl groups are here. I've acetylated this molecule, um, and that this is the only area I've changed. And now I have a semi-synthetic um, uh, opiate molecule. This is no longer an opiate. It's an opioid, but it's not an opiate because it's not naturally occurring. It's not morphine. Um, but rather, I've acetylated the morphine, I've modified it slightly, it's what we call semi-synthetic, and I have created a molecule of heroin. Now, heroin is interesting in that the acetylation of this molecule, because if you look at these hydroxyl groups here, um, the, the oxygen is highly electronegative, so it, it's going to pull the electrons from the hydrogen toward it here. Um, and so you're going to have a um, partially negative, you're going to have more electron density over here in a partially positive, or you're going to have less electron density here. That creates a very polar molecule. Hydroxyl groups are very polar. So you, you, you add these really, really highly polar molecules, boom, um, like morphine plus this polar area here, and you have a molecule that is rather polar all around. Um, however, if I get rid of these guys and add the acetyl groups on, these acetyl groups are much more nonpolar. And what does that mean as far as the physiochemical properties of this molecule? That means that this molecule is going to be highly lipophilic. It's going to be lipophilic. It's going to be able to penetrate lipid membranes much easier, which means that if I 
take this heroin, I inject this heroin into my body, this heroin is going to penetrate the central nervous system much easier than morphine because morphine is, is more polar. This is going to penetrate into directly into the central nervous system and then once this penetrates into the central nervous system there will be biotransformation, there will be metabolism of that diacetylmorphine, which is heroin, diacetylmorphine, okay, those two, those diacetyl groups will be removed, okay, and I will then have morphine. So the heroin moves into the central nervous system, the acetyl groups are, are um, biotransformed, they're metabolized back into hydroxyl groups, and now I have morphine straight into the brain. And that's what makes um, heroin so potent is that when you give it, heroin is kind of a prodrug. It doesn't have any pharmacological ac activities, at least as far as um, interacting with the, the mu kappa and sigma receptors until it is metabolized into its active metabolite, morphine. But unlike morphine, diacetylmorphine, Okay, the heroin is able to penetrate into the central nervous system very rapidly, very easily. It's able to concentrate in the central nervous system, and then it gets biotransformed or metabolized into its metabolite uh, morphine. So now I have a bunch of morphine sitting right there in the central nervous system. Okay, very cool. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to modify the um, morphine molecule ever so slightly yet again. And this is kind of a cool modification here. Let me just grab um, the little groups that I need to show you how this works here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to remove this. I'm going to keep this hydroxyl group here, but I'm going to remove this hydroxyl group and this carbon or this hydrogen here. And I'm going to put a oxygen that is a double, double covalently bound oxygen here okay so now I have my my oxygen that's double covalently bound and then what I'm going to do is I am going to take one of these hydrogens off of this methyl group that's on the um, nitrogen the tertiary nitrogen and I'm going to replace that with a propanol group okay it's two carbons uh, double covalent bound attached Okay, so I have sp2, sp2 hybridization here. Okay, so all I've done is I've added, and now I have a propanol group, a propanol group, okay, which is an alkene, because uh, it's double bond, I have double covalent bonding, a propanol group, a, a propanol group instead of a methanol group, a, 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 a methyl, methanol group, a methyl group, excuse me, <laughs> a methyl group, a propanol group here, and I have a double covalent bound oxygen to this carbon here. And now what I have done is I have created a molecule of naloxalone. Now naloxalone is a narcotic antagonist. So naloxalone is a medication that you would administer if somebody has overdosed on an opioid medication. And the way that this naloxone molecule works is it looks similar enough to things like morphine that it is able to interact with the opioid receptors. It's able to attach to the receptor, okay? So it competes, okay? It is co it com it's a competitive, competes with the um, whatever the uh, overdosed opioid is, you know, heroin, morphine, what have you, it competes with that substance for the um, opioid receptors, okay? It attaches, but it does not activate the receptor. It, it does not activate those receptors. It just stays attached there. And so if you give enough of this naloxone to compete um, with whatever the, um, narcotic your patient is overdosed on, um, you will uh, you will reverse that overdose through competition. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought this is really cool that I could actually show you some of these molecules and just by making relatively minor chemical cha changes to the chemical structure, um, I can have 
very different physio, uh, physiochemical properties and very different mechanisms of action. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.